So today I just wanted to talk about something that Donald Trump has, has said before, and it, it deals with these tariffs. You know, he wants to replace the income tax with tariffs. And quite honestly, folks, there's uh, there's nothing more scary, I think, to the U.S. economy than that proposal. So I wanted to touch on that. He was on a podcast called All In Podcast, and someone asked him a question about what an economist, in this case it was Larry Summers, what he said about Donald Trump's idea. And it's very interesting. But before we get there, I got to show you this. So try not to laugh when these come to your community. This is what the new postal vehicle is going to look like. Uh, it's got a windshield that is as big as a movie screen at the theater. Very interesting. And it has a hood that's basically a duck bill. And what's under the hood? We don't, nobody knows what's under the hood. Why even have a hood when it's, when it's that narrow? Um, very interesting, but it does a lot of good things as, as you can see here. It's got a lot of uh, bells and whistles, so it's going to help them out a lot. Very efficient from what we understand, but try not to laugh. And then, folks, this whole thing with the Louisiana governor decreeing that the Ten Commandments have to go in every classroom, and, and he went on to even say how big the poster had to be and the font of the poster. I mean, kind of ridiculous. It's red meat for evangelicals. They toss this stuff out. The evangelicals and the conservatives eat it up. They lap it up. Of course, the liberals scratch their head and say, why in the hell are you doing this? You know, there is a separation here because it's a public school that you should have a separation of church and state. I get it. But at the end of the day, really, to me, who cares, right? If they tack these posters up, what they should be worried about are the educational standards in Louisiana. And I asked G Chat GPT the, the question about where Louisiana schools stand. And it came back and said they consistently rank near the bottom in nationwide education rankings. According to various sources that evaluate different metrics, such as academic performance, graduation rates, and funding, Louisiana typically falls within the bottom five states in the nation. So clearly, we should not be talking about tacking up the Ten Commandment posters in every classroom, we should be talking about how to improve educational outcomes for these poor kids that are getting a really crappy education through Louisiana. But did you see the video today? So he's signing it, the decree, and then some little girl, poor little girl, faints in the background, and nobody seems to care. I mean, what kind of... Nobody stops. The whole thing just keeps going. The display of the Ten Commandments in every classroom in public, elementary, secondary, and post-education schools in the state of Louisiana. And there she goes. Because if you want to respect the rule of law, you got to start from the original lawgiver, which was Moses. All right. All right. Nobody seems to care. I mean, they, to me, they, there's a sort of... Uh, dissonance there, isn't there? Um, wouldn't you stop and, and just make sure she's okay just for a second? But nobody seems to want to slow the train. But in any event, we should be talking about the education that these kids are getting. So on the All In podcast, someone evidently who is as scared as I am about the, the idea, first of all, that Donald Trump wins a second term, not a big fan, and then secondly, installs this policy where tariffs replace income tax. So here's the question, folks, and here's here's what Donald Trump said. Have a, have a listen. Mr. President, can I, can I just ask on your point about the tax cuts, Larry Summers made a comment the other day, and I thought maybe you could respond to his tweet that the tax cuts coupled with the tariffs that you've proposed would cause a massive, I think he called it the mother of all stagflation, where you would have kind of inflation because of the tariffs, you would have economic decline because more money would start to fund a, an increase in prices with tax coming down, tax cuts being put in place. Can you maybe just comment on, on, on the comment made by Larry Summers and how we implement tax cuts without inflation? Well, let me say that I respect Larry Summers a lot. He's been right about a lot of things, and Obama and Biden have been wrong. Uh, certain things that he said turned out to be true, certain things. And uh, he really, I do have a good respect for him. He's a different kind of a guy, and he speaks his mind. I happen to be a big believer in tariffs, because I think tariffs give you two things. They give you economic gain, but they also give you political gain. If 
if a country is out of control and something having nothing to do with economics or having nothing to do with with money coming in or money going out, but other things that are very political, because there are a lot of other things involved in countries, you have tremendous power over a country. Now, not everybody can say that, but we can because we're the big piggy bank. But our piggy bank is going to get smaller and smaller all the time because we're losing power. We're losing a lot of, you know, countries on the dollar. I mean, they're going like no. flies. If we ever lose that, that's the equivalent of losing a, a war. That would be an unbelievable. That would really make us third world. We have lost so many countries. I looked the other day. So Russia's gone. Uh, so you, you take a look. Ukraine doesn't sort of exist in a sense. Nobody knows what's going on there. But when you look at China, is essentially gone. They're trying to get out of it. They want. They're a primary competitor. Uh, uh, Iran is not there. The other day, I read where so. Saudi Arabia is willing to now go in various different currencies instead of the dollar. This is a tragedy. This is a big thing that's happening against our country. And you know, folks, the so. <laughs> The thing that kind of gets me on this whole thing is that Donald Trump pointed to the tariffs and he said there's an economic gain and a political gain. True, there's an economic gain, but it comes at the price of higher prices for everybody. You, how can you raise uh, prices essentially with a tariff on every product that's coming into the United States without that impacting the end consumer? I mean, to me, it just sounds so patently obvious. And I'm not an economist like Larry Summers. I'm just trying to, I'm a Captain Obvious, pointing out the obvious here, folks. Um, and to me, that's trouble for the economy, the U.S. economy. It's trouble for the stock market. But let me show you this. So I just want to show you this screen right away here. So this is uh, touching on a few of the themes that Donald Trump spoke about. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the SWIFT transaction system that's used throughout the world, predominantly. I mean, it's the big deal. It's what all the countries use in making transactions. So what is it? It's the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. Uh, it is a messaging network that allows banks to securely send and receive information electronically, such as instructions for transferring funds between accounts, like wire transfer instructions. And the point that Donald Trump made that we're losing the, the basis for international transactions being the dollar we're, we're losing just simply isn't true. There's an article that's out by elibrary.imf.org and it's talking about currency usage for cross-border payments and it says that as of the end of 2021 the U.S. dollar accounted for about 40 percent of cross-border SWIFT flows followed closely by the euro. So Fast forward that to May 21st of 2024, there's an article from the AtlanticCouncil.org, and it says the latest SWIFT report shows that in March of 2024, the dollar improved its position, accounting for 47.37% of the total transaction value of all transactions. So we've gone up, but that's got to be at least 16% increase in three years of the dollar being the foundational currency for transactions. And again, when you look at how big the dollar is throughout the world, it's huge. Uh, take a look again at this article from AtlanticCouncil.org. It says that the share of foreign transactions um, where the dollar is the basis on one side or the other represents 89% of the foreign all foreign exchange transactions worldwide. So 89% of all the foreign transactions that are going on have the dollar on one side. I mean, that's huge. And the trend is not down, it's up, folks. And that's because the dollar is the biggest game in town. It's got the most liquidity. It's what other people who are buying and selling goods, um, they, they want to get dollars so that they can turn around and buy products that they need to keep making products. I mean, it's, it's something that's probably more than likely not going to change. And obviously the trend is higher where the dollar is actually increasing in usage. So the whole argument that, you know, we gain economic and political value doesn't really make a lot of sense when you look at it from that vantage point. So kind of scary stuff from my viewpoint, folks. And the other thing that he talked about was immigrants. If immigrants get a degree, then they should be given a green card, Donald Trump says in his administration. Have a listen to this. 
want to do and what I will do is you graduate from a college, I think you should get automatically as part of your diploma a green card to be able to stay in this country. And that includes junior oh. colleges too. Anybody graduates from a college, you go in there for two years or four years, if you graduate or you get a doctorate degree from a college, you should be able to stay in this country. And So that's interesting, folks, because, you know, the Trump University could have been a green card mill. Right. Donald Trump just lost out bigly on what Trump University, the role that they could play in his uh, administration here. I mean, this is a, this is a huge loss financially for him. And I'm sure he's scratching his head saying, dang it, you know, if I only had Trump University, we could have we could have really made some money here. But before I let you go, folks, so Governor Noem was on Fox News and Stuart Varney will not let the whole conversation go. Remember the time that she shot her dog? for God knows, I forget even why the reason, you know, why she shot her dog, but she did. And she wrote about it. She put it in her book and Stuart Varney would not let it go. And it didn't end well. In line to be Trump's vice president. No, it's, up to, it's up to Donald Trump. He's the only person who will decide this. Yeah, He's the only friend. person who will decide. And I spoke, yes, I do speak to him. May I ask what yes. he said to oh, you about yes. him being no, vice president? I never, t I never tell anybody my personal conversations Did with Did the dog story president come up Trump. in a conversation with I talk Trump? to President Trump all the time. About Ooh. the dog? About a lot of things. And right now, I tell you what, he is being persecuted in a political what hunt. about the dog? Witch hunt in this court case. Dog killer. So Did he I'm bring proud up of him about how tough he is and how well he is doing. Did you bring up yes, the dog enough. Trump? Stewart, with Trump. Did you this interview is with ridiculous what you were doing right now. <laughs> I don't so you so. need to stop. It is. Okay. It is. We'll Let's stop. talk about some real topics that Americans um, care about. I'm afraid we're out of time. Oh, well, of course we but are. We do thank you for being with us. Right. I know I pressed hard, but that's what people are talking about oh, okay. to this day. Yeah. Governor Noah, thanks for joining us. Thank we you. appreciate it. You bet. We'll be back in just a moment with the opening bell. Ooh, ooh, folks, she's hotter than a, hotter than a pepper there. Hmm, hotter than a pepper sprout. My gosh. Doesn't want to talk about something that she did, but she wrote about it. Does that make any sense? Till next time, folks.